Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me for another Distress Oxide colour combination video. Today we're looking at antique linen, so the third in our Distress Oxide videos. We're working through these alphabetically, so we've already had abandoned coral and aged mahogany, so antique linen is next. Now antique linen is a what I call a neutral, so within my blending brushes I've actually given it a black handle because it's one of my neutrals. It's one that I think will actually go with any colour. The trick is just to blend it into those colours with a softer colour first. So um, by um, <laughs> recommendation, I've done a green blend first of all, and then I'm going to do a much warmer blend with some sort of oranges and browns as well. So um, with this, once you've learned which of your other oxides you can bring this into, and I'll go through a few of those actually, just talk you through a few colours I think will work really nicely beside it. Um, you can then go on into much deeper, darker colours within your combination if you want to. So let's see, first of all, antique linen, what this looks like. It's, to me, it's like a very, very pale yellow, a cream, almost, almost a magnolia. So um, a bit like the sort of the, the common paint colour magnolia. I think it's very similar to this. And this is often um, a colour that I will use at one end of a colour combination because it's almost too pale, too light too neutral to go into anything else. So there we go. So that is your antique linen. Let's just bring my blending mat up so you can see that a bit better. That's your antique linen. Can, so you can see it is, I think it's quite a cool colour. It's a cool cream colour, but um, it is a really lovely colour and so perfect for going with so many different shades. Now let's bring this into our first combination. So let's work with the greens. Old paper is going to be my next one. And then I'm going to go into peeled paint. So this will be a green tone. Now, old paper is also, to me, a, a creamy sort of colour, but with a hint of green. So it just brings it into the cream a little bit. You'll barely see a difference there, but it's going to work so nicely then into the harsher green, it's not harsh green, but the stronger colour green that we're looking at. Now, old paper is another one of those ink pads that I find I really have to work to build the colour up, the same as Tattered Rose, but that's fine. Some of them are just paler colours, so pressing quite hard on that and bringing that ink up in just in circles, always working in circles so you capture all edges of the grain of the paper see how well that actually blends you can barely see the blend at all so this is the old paper and this is the antique linen but because we've got that slight very slight green hue there we can easily then go in to peeled paint which is a much much darker green so old paper is almost acting as the middleman here you see how bright that green is isn't it gorgeous Absolutely beautiful for spring cards, for Christmas as well, if you want to do a Christmas green. Um, let's bring that into the old paper. And then bring a bit of the old paper down just over the join there as such. There we go. So as you can see, antique linen is ever so, ever so similar to old paper. In fact, let's just take these lids off. You can only just see the difference, can't you? And if I place this there, you really can't see much difference at all. So if you are sort of building up your stash but deciding which colours to get and which ones to just leave for now, I would definitely say old paper's probably one you can get away with not having if you've got antique linen. Now, old paper does have that slight hue of green. So uh, if you're going to get this one, you're going to want to be mixing those with your cooler shades, ideally. Whereas antique linen, I think you can get away with really mixing that with almost any colour. So let's move on to another combination. But that is a lovely colour blend anyway. So let's wipe away the green. And we'll go on to a warmer shade this time. And I'll just dry my mat as well. The clear blending mat and the blending brushes that I'm using, these are all available at Craft Stash, as are the oxides. So let's now put the greens out the way and come to the warmer shade. So these are my oranges. Excuse the purple and all sorts on my <laughs> on my um, lids there. 
they just they get messy they get messy I don't mind at all they all work inside so antique linen first of all pop this down again okay, nice solid color it goes on beautifully very creamy and it just works really well on white cardstock so let's bring that up to around about just over a third of the paper and then dried marigold now if we look at the lid dried marigold really is again really quite a pale color and this is what you want to blend into antique linen is your paler colors to start with so let's pick up some of this turn that over now i'm going to put the solid color up to the edge first so I'm not doing any blending just yet. Let's get that solid colour down in the middle, first of all. Make sure we fully cover this. And then I'm going to go just with the excess now that's on my brush, just capturing the edge and starting to feather that into the antique linen. Because it's such a pale colour, you will pick, pick up the darker colour into the light really very quickly. And then I'm going to come back in with the antique linen and just again, just blend in. There we go. Lovely, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. And then let's make this even darker. Let's make this a striking ombre and bring in rusty hinge. So this is one of my favourite colours at the minute. And I adore mixing this as well, rusty hinge with teals and blues. So let's bring that up to about there, I think. Now, because it's such a strong colour, I'm not going to go any higher with that. I'm going to come back with my dried marigold, put a little bit more on my brush, and then just work that into the join as such, where the two meet. Just keep going over there, like so. Isn't that gorgeous? So we've got antique linen, dried marigold, and rusty hinge. So you can see there that that antique linen really is going to work with so many different colorways. Now, as I said, I will just show you a few other colors uh, that I think you can work this with. Now, weathered wood is perfect. So you notice we're looking at much paler colors here. Milled lavender here is a lilac, as is spun sugar is much lighter color. So really your pastel shades that you've got within your um, within your distress oxide range. Let's just move these out of the way because I've got a few more I can show you. So pumice stone is a grey if you really want a very neutral background. Um, tea dye is a pastel as well. If you're going to go into a yellow, I would say scattered straw. So there we go. Um, so we've got pretty much every colour there, haven't we, I think. If you're going to want to go into a red, I would say probably, do you know what? I would go back to aged mahogany again. Now we did mix aged mahogany alongside antique linen just in the last video. So see how these two mix. They do go really well together. Now that's a stronger colour, but that can lead you then into the darker reds if you want to. But certainly any of these colours, I've got dried marigold, old paper, pumice stone, tea dye, weathered wood, milled lavender, spun sugar and scattered straw. Very much pastel, very, very creamy, pale shades are all going to work really well into antique linen. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've learned something and I hope you try out some of these colour blends as well. I will be back next time with the fourth video in the series. So please do join me for that and please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already to make sure you don't miss any.